Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, as far as, as having heat, the main heat, the, right off the top of my head, if I had heat with anybody, it was the women wrestlers or women, women. Oh, yeah. That came in during that time period, and, I, and I'm talking about Sable. Sable. And you and Sonny were and, lovely to each other. And, and Tammy, I mean. Tammy C. <laughs> now, I want to clarify this a little bit. <coughs> and, uh, and, and, and I used to have to referee some of this because I was I was. I like didn't Sonny's, realize that you were. Uh, you I was, I was Sonny's appointed babysitter uh, because I, nobody else. I, I mean, I, I like Tammy because I've recognized and and have told her this to her face many times, all since her since I began her career that she's a cunt, and she knows she's a cunt. She's a miserable cunt, and that's and why I she hate got cunts. Heat. <laughs> but that's why she got heat. Maybe that's why I didn't give her none. And then, well, there it is. <laughs> oh, that feels good. I like Thank you. I love you. That was a good one. I love you. <laughs> but, but Tammy, Sonny, God bless her, she could she could rub people the wrong way in about two fractions and of a she second. She did me. And God, you guys were at each other's throat. And because nobody really wanted to deal with her at that particular period of time, I was assigned to be her babysitter to, for her to turn in her expense reports or for her to to be, do third parties or anything it had to come through me. So I would impart it to her. So they come to me with, well, Sonny and Paul Bear just hate each other. They're ready to kill each other. you got to do something. So now I love both of you in your own individual this ways. Is and I've got to I had forgot about this. I I've got to come in and go, please, can't we all just get along? I forgot they have They've part. instructed me to somehow rectify this. Paul, I know. I She's a bitch. She's a raging bitch. I know she is. Help me out here. I seriously, I forgot it's, about your part in that. She really had made you so hopping up and down mad. And I, it, I laugh now to think back on it. In hindsight, <laughs> you know, we're a few years later now. In hindsight, <laughs> 2020, and, and, and Chris isn't with us anymore. And, and it's a shame. He was a fantastic talent and a fantastic Great human kid. being and everything. And, you know, he, he loved Tammy. That's, that's fine. I love my wife, and you, and you love your lady. And we all do. But that was the deal. They were young men. This has been a few years ago, and they were just made it big to the big time. Now this that was that was ten years ago. It, it's been ten years ago. Almost. So there's a, there's a lot of Eight. there's a lot of water under the bridge there, and I was I already been there for several years. You know, I was already established with the Undertaker and everything, and here she came, and she just hit me the wrong way with with the attitude that she had, and it's just one of the things that I, <laughs> it's little things like. You know, I can remember one time we we would do remember the tent shows we'd do around Cape Cod and yeah, the, you know what I'm talking about. There was several small arenas in the summer around the some of them were tents, some of them were tents, yeah, some of them would be out around Boston. Tents, there, 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 there. I remember us being in one of those things. <laughs> it was during one of me and Sonny's uh, heated battles. It never physical, of course. <laughs> it was always verbal, and most of it was behind each other's back. And somebody would tell somebody, I'd say something there, and then and then anyway, uh, we had, the dressing room was something similar to the room we in. It was a hallway down down the front there. And I, I just happened to open the door. Chris Candido's standing there, and I see Sonny. It's like an L there. Candido's here. Sonny's here. And there's a broom sitting in the corner as I open the door up. And I don't know where it came from. It's like a lot of things that we said. I don't know where the hate for Kevin Dunn came from. But it's a f***ing heart. I just, uh, and the knife's in the back. I mean, there's not still any knife in my back. Oh, wait, let me pull it out. Does it say KD or J. KD. Oh, no. It could no. be Jerry Lawler. That's the Tennessee handshake, right? <laughs> Pull it out. No. But anyway, I open that damn door. I saw, I saw Chris. I saw I saw Tammy <laughs> sitting there, and and, and and I grabbed the broom and I went, Chris, when you go home, here's your wife and here's your girl's uh, transportation. <laughs> and I tossed him the broom. And, and me being the Undertaker's manager, which Chris probably could whoop my ass. That's for damn sure. He, you know, young and, and da da da. But me being protected by the Undertaker, thank God. Walking in the shadow of the Undertaker, <laughs> and nobody ever tried it. Uh, but Chris went outside and started tearing up this patio. They had a, we, there was food, where they served food, stuff, chairs, patio furniture and stuff. He started taking patio furniture, throwing it over the fence. He stuck a chair up in the tree and just went nuts, you know. He would, instead of beating me up, he went out and took it out on the, on the patio furniture. So shortly there, now I need to clarify this, Tammy. If Tammy's watching this, it, it, you know, I hope somebody points this out to us. I really would like to see, because I haven't talked to her since then, and and I'm sorry about about things that have happened. But there was a situation that happened at, at another arena, and and as far as people ribbing me was few, few and far between. If anybody ribbed me, it was the Undertaker. Nobody else ribbed me. Yeah. Because if they did, Undertaker ribbed me. Nobody <laughs> else would. I went to the ring. And I came back to my to my uh, 
to my stuff, and I had a halliburton. Everybody was carrying halliburton, halliburtons in, and somebody had took super glue and glued my the locks on my halliburton. Super glue shot, uh, and everything's in there. Passport, money, the dog. And those things are about two hundred fifty bucks a piece anyway. Every everything. Undertaker gave me this one. It was one of the expensive ones, and uh, my shoes were in the toilet. My clothes were strewn everywhere and stuff. And immediately, I mean, I knew it was sunny. It had, nobody. It had to be sunny. And and as a matter of fact, I remember, and that's why I thought it wasn't because everybody wanted to see you go off on her, and I think it was a setup to see if you would murder her. I think and, it was, and it was just I knew it was her, and I'm sorry, Tammy, because it wasn't. Her. I didn't find I didn't find out this until years later. That it wasn't, it wasn't her. Remember that? That's when I came into it, because I that's when I had to start refereeing. I'm like, it's too perfect. I, although it was, it's too it perfect. was somewhere out of Chicago, because I remember me, me, I think Kane was with me, and we were driving back into Chicago. We were at a toll booth, <laughs> and I look over to the side. Who's paying the toll at the same time we are? The same night that my shit got booted up, there was was uh, was a uh, Chris and Sonny right next to us, and I started to roll. King hit the window lock while I couldn't really open it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I reached for the window lock and everything. Says, Here's my chance. You know? Now, I mean, I'm going nuts. I'm beating you with the windows and shit. You know? <laughs> and they, they're looking at me like, look at that crazy son of a bitch. They didn't know. They now, didn't this know. was hindsight being 2020. They didn't know my stuff got glued up. Here, they didn't know I'm putting all the heat on me. Here's they, the classic you know, thing. Really you, you have some people that have a natural affinity for each other like we do. That, that, or some of you, where people just naturally get along. You have sometimes where people naturally don't get along, but for good reason, like us and Kevin Dunn, because our talents have been uh, disrespected, insulted, put down, and held back because of his bogus attempts at television production. Um, or you just have people who, even though all they have to do is coexist in the same room for an hour a day, just rub each other the wrong way to the point where they are hopping up and down, screaming mad, and that was you and Tammy. It, it was a natural thing. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful and in a way. If we had met each other in different circumstances and under in a different, <laughs> you know, we would probably think would have probably you would have hated fine. each other still. It, it would have been fine, but it bothered me. It, Chris and Tammy loved each other dearly, and, and, and that's that's great, you know, because I know how, how I love my wife, and and they, they were just young, and they they got had a big break. And it, what bothered me is Chris would kind of follow uh, Tammy around, you know, like a little yeah. puppy dog, and, and you know what I'm talking about. And one day in Madison Square Gardens, I called him out in front of all the boys. I said, Chris, come here. And I called him around to the back, and I told him just what I told you. You know, I said, this is what, what we think. And Percy, I love her. I said, that's great. I just wanted you to know, you know. I, I don't like her. <laughs> <laughs> and it don't mean that I don't like you. But... <laughs> Remember when, when we were talking about that? I said, Percy, and, and you, you you just wanted it. You wanted it to be her. You wanted it to be her, so you and had it, an excuse to grab her. It was her. But I said, Percy, it's too perfect. It's too perfect. It can't be. They want you to kill her because everybody was mad yeah. at her, too. But several years later, you know, I hated them forever for, the, for that. But several <laughs> years later, I found out it wasn't them. It was Billy Gunn, Billy and Bart Gunn, the smoking guns. And they and they done it because they thought I had done something to their stuff. Oh, I thought it was I, no. I always thought it was somebody trying to set you up no, for that. No, that could have. I found out because Billy had told me later down the road. Well, that, now who was it that did the to their? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. But they thought that I'd done something to their stuff, which <laughs> I'm certainly not an angel. You don't see a halo around the head. I'd done my share of ribs through, through the years, but I was always the silent river type where I would do something and run and sit down and watch what happened, you know. Yeah. And, and just whatever, whatever. Set it up and then, and then see the science project you know, in action. I, I swear, after all these years, and I'm man enough to say it now, that, you know, I'm sorry, Tammy. And, and I am. I, I, I did, I, you know, it was one of those things, wrong time, wrong place. And in fact, Tammy has publicly stated many, many times, and I have to, where she hates me. <laughs> and I hate her. I really don't hate you. I did it one time, but I don't anymore. No you know, I don't hate nobody anymore. I'm getting too old for this, this shit, this, this hating stuff. And but, but I don't. So that's all water under the bridge there. But and, and meanwhile, I'm sitting over here trying to figure out how to, because I, I like you and I like her. And, and 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 as a matter of fact, there's so few people that I really do like. Now that you come to think of it, I, I couldn't believe two of them were actually arguing with each other. So I'm trying to. But now, Percy, can't you just no? Tommy, can't you just no? The heat between us was so hot that I forgot about you being the mediator there. It has totally escaped my mind until this very moment. I, I, I don't. I remember it now, 
but I forgot those conversations oh, that we had <laughs> about Tammy. So I so, saw, like I said, you know, I I, I I done my share. Really. It was like the Arabs and the Israelis. It was. It, it, it was really bad. I hated her. It made me sick. And I started hating all the women. You know, when Sable. Sable. Came, I I hit. And the only one. I, if she'd taken an AK-47 and just shot Marrow's career in the heart, could she have killed it any deader? I, I don't know if if it was the fact, Jimmy, that that me and you being from the old school and came up the way we did that we did and being a, a manager that this was what we were bringing in the valets and the divas and stuff and this was the beginning of that and <laughs> it was it was killing us off I, I, you know i didn't have a problem with the valets or the divas as long as they were even remotely talented even right. possessing yeah, of the exactly. ability of simple speech and movement uh even you know uh, the barest hint of possible product knowledge whatsoever any of those things but most of them did they didn't care um, and, and Sable, getting... Sable was the ultimate warrior of females. She yeah. was uh, built on a bluff, smoke, mirrors, and myths. They had their own dress. You know, the, the, <laughs> some of those TV tapings, the buildings were so small, and, and you know how many pe guys were there. And this, you know, we were two all... rooms of equal size, exactly. 37 guys and three girls. And, but the girl, yeah. <laughs> the guys would all be in one room, but the girls, there'd be three girls, and they'd have a giant room all to themselves. And if they needed something... Oh, I need tampons. Oh, I, I, I just, you need tampons. I figure you, you need them every day, as far as I'm concerned. And while you get, when you get a box of tampons, send some out to the production truck to Kevin Dunn. 